I'm Justin Pritchard for Driving.ca, and with Valentine's Day right around the corner, I thought in this video we would look back at some of my biggest sheet metal crushes over the years, what they cost today, and how my very first automotive crush hit me so hard I've now owned two of them. I'll share my biggest crush with you at the end of this video, and you can share yours with your fellow drivers down in the comment section below. But for now, let's kick things off with a little red sports car that likes to play hard to get. This is the Porsche 911, in particular a GT3, and one of my very first memories is playing with a wind-up toy little red Porsche just like this one with my grandmother in her hallway. You might say I fell in love with the little red 911 before I was even good at walking. After driving the real-life 911 GT3 a few years back, hardly a week goes by where it's not on my mind. She's charming, flattering, friendly, curvaceous, and from behind, well, I was about 500 horsepower sent to the rear wheels with drivers in full control via what's probably the fastest automated transmission on the road today. Driven hard, this thing has sharper claws than your ex, and that screamer engine in the back does boatloads of revs and makes a noise that'll set your loins ablaze. And while built for punishment on a racetrack setting, a 911 GT3 doesn't need to be your side fling. This one's just fine for daily driving if you like, meaning there's ample opportunity for quality time together. Today, a used GT3 like the one on your screen will still run you about 150,000 Canadian dollars, maybe more, and that's if you can track one down. are rare and pricey, a love affair that might be a dream for most browsing the used car ads. Not this one though, this is the Audi RS5, and if a 911 GT3 seems about two seats, two driven wheels, and roughly a hundred grand or so away from reality for you, you might like this instead. If you're a hot-blooded enthusiast with a throbbing right foot, you'll fall in love fast with 450 horsepower lightning speed paddle shifting, an 8500 RPM V8 engine, and quattro all-wheel drive, making sure you can have your way with all of the above, even in the snow. I sure did. This was one of the best all-time winter driving dance partners I've ever had. Both on the surface and beneath the skin, this is one of those cars that really expresses mankind's love of the performance automobile. It was a roughly 95,000 Canadian dollar car in 2013 when we filmed this. Today, you can find used copies like this one for less than half of that amount all day long. For some, that makes starting a new love affair a potential reality. The memories I made during a weekend at the wheel in blizzard conditions with this car make it probably my biggest winter driving crush of all time. But there's still just one machine that I fell so madly in love with that I've now had two of them in my own garage. It's not this super hot Volvo V60 Polestar wagon, another winter love affair and machine I'd still love to have. Or even the Acura TL, my weirdest crush, but the first time I ever drove a luxury sedan that connected modern day touches with a beautiful Honda VTEC V6 engine, something I'd obsessed about as a young enthusiast and Honda fanatic for years. Nope, the automotive love of my life comes not from Japan, but from Detroit. From the moment the Dodge Viper materialized into existence, my parents had few waking hours free of hearing everything about it when I was a teenager. You're looking at my first love, head over heels, and I still have no idea exactly why, but nothing on four wheels has this many miles on my mind or under my skin giving me goosebumps. Maybe it's the looks, or the mystique, or the way Jim Scouten's voice used to go to this other level of excitement whenever he drove one on Motor Trend television when I was a kid. In any case, this snake bit me hard. I drove this 2000 GTS as often as I could for five years with little more trouble than a clutch and some brake pads. Eventually, we grew apart a little, so she made a great trade-in on a younger model, this 2008 SRT10 that's currently still in my stable. 
This is a more affordable love affair than you might think too. In my case, Viper No. 1 was purchased for about 40,000 Canadian, driven spring, summer and fall as often as I could for 5 years, and then traded in on Viper No. 2 for about $30,000. If you do the math, that's about $2,000 a year plus a lot of gas, which I find reasonable to own one's dream car. When I trade Viper No. 2 in for Viper No. 3 someday, I'd expect similar results. So the moral of these love stories is, if you're looking to find new love on the internet, head to those used car listings and follow your dreams, you never know what you'll find.